welcome to another installment of the Star Citizen Industry Guides. This is your mining guide. In Star Citizen, there are three ways of mining. You can mine small crystallized gems on foot with the multi-tool. Also, you can mine medium-sized crystallized gems with small vehicles like the Great Cat ROC. And lastly, you can mine large rocks with mining ships like the Miss Prospector or the Argo Mo. In this tutorial, we'll go through the A to Z of ship mining. We will be using the Miss Prospector. I'll take you through the understanding of mining heads and consumables. Along with that, I'll provide you with some viable outfitting for your mining ship. After that, we'll cover where to mine. You can expect to learn how to scan for mineable rocks and a detailed explanation of the mining user interface. Then we'll go over the best ores to look for. Following that, we'll cover how to fracture and extract the mining material. I'll teach you how to handle quantanium. Then to close out, I'll take you through where to sell or refine your mining ore. And at the end, I'll give you a quick tip on how to fracture some of the more difficult and lucrative rocks on your own. So make sure to stay tuned for that. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification button for more Star Citizen content such as this. So without any further ado, let's get started. Hey guys, it's phase one. Before we get started, I'd like to advise that any key minds mentioned in this tutorial are subject to change as Star Citizen is still under development. Should you notice that any key bind mentioned in this video does not work, please hit escape, go to options and key binds and find a new key bind. I've gone ahead and left all the segments of this tutorial in the description below for future reference. To get started, let's head out to your local mining equipment dealer to pick up some useful mining gear such as a new mining head and some mining consumables which will assist us on our journey. You can find mining equipment at the Shubin and Stellum at Microtech, the Dumpers Depot in Art Corp, and if you're in Crusader Space you can pick some up at the Dumpers Depot in Port Alisar. The newly added refinery decks at the Lagrange Point are also fantastic places to pick up all your mining gear. In this tutorial, we're located at Everest Harbor in orbit of Hurston, so we'll head over to Hurston L1. A quick tip, when you start mining, I recommend you pick a location whereby you have quick access to a mining site, also a refinery deck, and lastly, a place to sell the refined ore. In this scenario, being in Hurston space, the potential mining sites are Hurston and its moons and the two Lagrange points. The refinery decks are at the two Lagrange points and the place to sell is the central business district in Lorville. I suggest selecting your area of operation in a similar fashion. This tutorial does not cover refining, but having these in the same vicinity allows you to mine and refine and sell efficiently. To learn how to refine, you will be referred to my refinery tutorial at the end of this video. In the station Hurston L1, let's head over to the refinery deck via the interstation transit elevators. At the back of the deck, you'll find a service area. Please take note that if you're renting your mining vehicle, that you can only use the stocked equipment. To rent, you can use this terminal here to rent a prospector. Let's head over to this terminal in the shop. For those that own a mining ship, consider that mining heads have different attributes in regards to its direct effect on a mineable rock. You can find this at the terminal prior to purchasing. For example, the helix slightly reduces instability and resistance of a rock once activated. For those that are mining solo in a prospector, I highly recommend picking up a helix 1 or an impact 1 from Thermite Concern. They have the highest power outputs. If you're multi-crewing with multiple prospectors or an Argo mole, then you can consider picking up a support mining head such as a Lasset, which cannot break some rocks on its own with a power level of 1400, but offers a 75% reduction of instability and resistance while expanding the green zone by 40%, which can make all the difference when attempting to break a rock with valuable ore such as Quantanium. 
Mining heads have advantages and disadvantages, so shop around to find the best combination when multi-crewing. So now, I mentioned consumables earlier, and for those that are new, you're probably wondering what mining consumables are. These are used to impose a certain influence on the mining process for a short period of time. Since patch 3.12, mining consumables are ever more important during the mining process. Some consumables can influence instability, energy level, and even expand the optimal fracture window, which is also referred to as the green zone, etc. Don't worry, we'll cover what these things are a little later. These consumables are attachable to mining heads. Some mining heads have one available slot while others have up to three. The Helix mining head I recommended previously has three slots. In addition, make note that some of these mining consumables have multiple charges, which means you can use them multiple times. Let's quickly go over the type of available mining consumables. The Brant reduces the instability of a rock by half with a cost of a 50% reduction to the charge window rate. We'll cover what that means a little later. The furrow reduces the resistance of a rock, but at an expense of 20% increase in instability. Lifeline reduces the damage from an exploding rock. The optimum doubles the green zone. This is good for rocks that have small green zones. I'll cover what that means a little later. Rhyme reduces the rock's energy level immediately. The stampede doubles the speed at which the rock's energy level increases. The surge instantly increases the rock's energy level by 30%. The torpid significantly reduces the rock's resistance but at a cost of reduction to the charge rate of the rock's energy level by half. Just keep in mind that these stats and attributes can change as CIG continues to develop Star Citizen. You can find more details like this from Danbird's Ultimate Mining Guide. You can find the link in the description below. For now, I recommend picking up a Brant, a Furrow, and a Surge Consumable. Before moving forward, let me give you some viable mining head and consumable combinations you can use. For beginners, you can start with a Lasset Mining Head with two Surge and one Stampede Consumables. This build will provide assistance with instability, resistance reduction, and power output with the surge consumables. For more experienced miners, you can try a Helix Mining Head and one Brant, one Furrow, and one surge consumable. With this build, you can engage the more difficult rocks. You can also interchange the Helix with an Impact Mining Head also if you choose. If you're multi-crewing with an Argo Mo, I recommend you use a combination of these builds for the three mining heads. This way your crew will be well equipped for any kind of rock you run into. Before heading out, don't forget to bring some extra food and water. So now that you've purchased your mining head and consumables, hit F1 to open your Mobi Glass. Under your vehicle management app, find and select your mining vehicle. Here you can attach your new mining head and attach the mining consumables. Head to the ASAP terminal and call your ship and get yourself situated. So now that you're in your ship, you're probably wondering where to mine. Well, there are three general areas where you can mine. The first are asteroid belts, second are the Lagrange points, and third are planets and moon surfaces. Open your Moby Glass in your star map and find and select the location and jump over. In this tutorial, we will mine in the asteroid fields of the Lagrange point of Hurston L1. Now that we're on site, before we begin prospecting and mining, let's first get an understanding of the capability of your ship. The prospector or any mining ship are generally sluggish. Take a few moments to assess how quickly it takes your ship to come to a complete halt after acceleration. This will give you a better understanding on how to manage your braking when approaching mineable rocks. This way you don't crash into them of course. This is vital when it comes to atmospheric environments. Be aware that when braking, your maneuvering thrusters can quickly become overheated. Once overheated, they will shut down momentarily. If you find that you're often experiencing overheating issues, you should consider upgrading your coolers. 
By using a K key, you can activate your VTOL thrusters, which will assist your ship with vertical movement when in atmosphere. But since we're in space, we don't need to worry about this. To start mining, we first need to find mineable rocks. Find a point of interest like your local moon, planet, or local star to use as a reference point so that you don't find yourself going in circles. Use a tab key to activate your ship scanner. Before we begin, let me give you an understanding on how to approach finding rocks. When on a planetoid, your primary scanner should be your own eyes. Why I'm saying this is that in most scenarios, you can pinpoint mineable rocks off in the distance before your ship scanner even picks it up. This rule doesn't apply when you're in space though. Whilst flying around, hold and release your left mouse button to send out a pulse. Holding this all the way will send out a pulse in its maximum distance. You can adjust your scanning radius with your mouse wheel. Scrolling up will adjust the scanning radius from a spheric bubble to a forward direction, thus increasing its scanning distance in that direction. Once a rock has been detected, you'll find it in your visor. In your vicinity, your scanner will pick up mineable rocks which is represented by this spheric rock in the UI. Point your cursor at the rock and hold your left mouse button to scan the rock and reveal information about the rock. On the top left, you'll find the mass of the rock. In the right corner, you'll find the rock's composition details. As you can see, the rock contains titanium and copper ore. You can see that the titanium takes up 2.45% of the rock's composition. Before moving forward, let's quickly go over what kind of ores you should be looking for to maximize profit. Ultimately, your goal is to find quantanium. At the moment, quantanium sells for 88.09 AUEC per unit, but quantanium is relatively rare. Please do keep in mind that this may change as CIG continues to develop the game. The remaining Bexalite, Terranite, Boraz, Laranite, Agrisium are good options as well. But when found, make sure the desired ore takes up at least 10% of the total mass of the rock. This will ensure you're getting a decent amount to earn significant amounts of money when selling or refining. Following that, you can pick up Hephaestonite or Titanium. If you find Hephaestonite, make sure it's at least 15% of the total mass of the rock. And if it's Titanium, make sure it's at least 20%. There are other ores out there, but at this moment, they're not worth your time. Hit the M key to bring up your mining UI. So now let's quickly go over the mining user interface. By default, your mining head will be set to fracture mode. This mode is used to break the rock into smaller fragments before you can actually extract your desired ore. If you haven't fully scanned the rock with your scanner earlier, on initiation, your scanner will continue to scan the rock and populate the necessary details about the rock to assist to successfully fracture and extract your desired ore. On your left, you can find the active modules. These are your consumables we equipped earlier. The first bar here is the laser intensity. This is your throttle to control the amount of power you're transferring to the rock. On your right, you'll notice the charge level. This graph will give you a bird's eye view on the amount of energy you're transferring to the rock. Within that, you'll notice the optimum charge window and the overcharge window. On your right, that is your scan result, which will provide more details about the rock such as the type, the mass, instability, resistance, and most importantly, the composition. On the right of that, you can find the cargo capacity of the vehicle. As you extract ore, you'll find that the manifest will be listed below. You'll see this shortly. As we begin to mine, I'll explain the dynamics of all this data to help you mine efficiently and safe. Left click to activate your laser and throttle up your mouse wheel. As you can see, the laser intensity percentage will begin to increase as you throttle up. Your throttle goes up and you'll notice that the rock's energy level will begin to rise. Your goal is to get the rock's energy level within the optimum window. This is referred to as the green zone. Once in the optimum range, you'll notice that the bar will begin to fill up. Do your best to keep the charge level here until the bar is completely full. But if you allow the rock's energy level to surpass the optimum range and into the overcharge window, you'll begin to overcharge the rock. 
which will result in explosion once the optimum bar is filled up. Avoid this as it can destroy your ship or lose the content of the rock itself. If you do hit the red, you can either decrease your laser throttle or move the laser away from the rock for a few moments. If you notice that you're not able to transfer enough energy into the rock, even though your throttle is at 100%, then you can move your ship closer to the rock. If you need more power, then you can go into your systems and overclock your laser. If all fails, then you can look into consumables. As I mentioned before, consumables are used for different purposes. In a scenario whereby you need more power, you can use the surge consumable. If you need to lower the resistance of a rock, you can use a photo consumable. Consumables can be vital when attempting to fracture some of the more difficult rocks. For example's sake, we will activate the brand consumable here and you'll notice a slight visual and audio change in your laser whilst it's active. On your left, you can see that the remaining time of the charge will remain active for. You'll also notice that the rock's instability has reduced here. So now that the rock has been fractured, you'll notice that some, if not all, are highlighted in purple. If you find that none of the fractured rocks are purple, then you just need to break them down further. When breaking down rock fragments, make sure to tone down on the laser throttle, as the rock is smaller and requires less energy to crack. The rocks highlighted with purple can be extracted. Right click to go into extraction mode and left click to extract the rock. As you extract, you'll notice that your cargo capacity will begin to fill up and a list of its content will begin to populate. If the rock you're extracting isn't 100% of the ore you're looking for, then the remaining percentage is either inert material or a combination of other ores and inert material. You want to limit the amount of inert materials you extract as they will take up space in your cargo hold. The value of inert material is extremely low and can stunt your potential profits. Once you finish extracting your desired ore, then move on and find another rock. So what if you find Quantanium? Quantanium is a very volatile ore. So once you extract it, you're on a timer. Once extracted, the Quantanium ore will begin to become more and more volatile until you either sell it or refine it or it will explode in your ship. The ship will indicate if you have a volatile cargo here. Here you can see the stability of the Quantanium. This percentage will continue to decrease in a linear fashion but will decrease significantly if you bump into other objects. Below that will be the timer. Should this timer run out, the Quantanium will explode, causing you to lose your ship and your cargo. After extraction, when it becomes approximately 8 minutes before explosion, this light here will blink yellow. When it's flashing fast in orange, you have about 6 minutes left. When it's fast in red, you have about 2 minutes left. And if it reaches the fourth stage, which is the fastest in red, just know that you have about 25 seconds left. The good thing is, is that we have the option to jettison our saddlebags before explosion, just in case we're unable to reach the station in time to sell or refine. Make note that when you jettison, the ship will jettison all the ore in the ship. Hopefully CIG will give us a way to select and jettison specific ore soon. Just a quick tip. When you find Quantanium, make sure to fracture all the rock fragments that have Quantanium before you begin extracting. This way you have more time to work with. So now that your cargo capacity is full, where to next? To sell or refine it, you'll need to find your local Lagrange point which has a refinery. In this case, it's Hurston L1. Once there, we'll request for a landing pad, land and head over to the refinery deck. Here, you can now find your ship and you'll have the option to sell the material on your ship. Pay attention to the percentage of the material you mined. Notice how even though the boras is up to 30% of the saddlebag, it sums up about 80% of the profit. Pay attention to the amount of inert material you mined. This will give you a better understanding on how to improve your next run. Mining is a lot more profitable if you refine the ore afterwards. 
so I recommend refining the ore instead. So head to the terminal and proceed to refine. At the end of this video, I will refer you to my refinery guide. So now that you've learned all you need to efficiently mine, I promise that I will provide you a tip on how to fracture the more difficult and lucrative rocks. To do this, you need at least one of your active modules to be equipped with a surge consumable. When you find a rock with a very valuable ore, they tend to be more dense and are usually over 6000 in mass and high in resistance. The way to fracture these rocks are as follows. Activate your laser and scroll up to 100%. Notice that the rock's energy level is barely increasing. Pop a surge consumable and make a mental note on the amount of energy it was able to deposit into the rock. So now allow the energy level to drop enough so that when you pop the second surge, it will land into the green zone and not overcharge the rock. Notice I'm dropping my laser intensity just to allow the rock's energy level to drop low enough for the next surge. After the second surge, notice that now we're in the green zone. Make sure that your rock's throttle is at 100% to ensure that it stays in the green zone long enough to fracture the rock. There you go. Congratulations. You now have all you need to efficiently mine and make consistent income as a miner in the universe of Star Citizen. If you liked anything in this video, make sure to leave a like and if you haven't already, subscribe for more star citizen content such as this if you have any questions leave it in the comments below i will see you on the next one